here we go. All right. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to present uh, on behalf of and with our group from Manitoba about the use of the favorite words um, and our implementation work related to this, this research project. Next slide. We want to start um, by acknowledging that the Live, Work and Play in Sky Centre is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, 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 Dakota, Sinboin, and Dene Nations, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. So Winnipeg is on Treaty 1 territory, which was signed in 1871, and this treaty took the territory from seven Anishinaabe First Nations and made the land available for settler use and ownership. Our team acknowledges that the land acknowledgement is um, only one way toward reconciliation, and we are committed in a broader effort toward expanding our knowledge uh, related to the rights and responsibilities of the people of this land and to become more mindful uh, in working together with families and communities as researchers and healthcare providers. So I'm going to hand over the What is Sky Network to Dr. Gina Rempel, who is a passionate advocate of the, the favorite words and really responsible for a lot of the pre-work that was done in Manitoba, especially. Thanks, Christy. My job today, really, besides being cheerleader for this group, is uh, to um, tell you a little bit about the Special Services for Children and Youth Network and our center. We affectionately call it SKY, which is the... Um, uh, pronunciation of the acronym for Special Service for Children and Youth. The SKY Network is an initiative focusing on integration. That's the simplest way to talk about this. Uh, for 30 years, we've recognized that we need better integration and better service delivery models that break down barriers, break down silos, and break down the jurisdictional issues that impact service delivery for children and youth in Manitoba. So the Sky Network is an actualization of that. And since 2016, we've been located in this beautiful Sky Center, which was redeveloped as a very useful, multifunctional, gorgeous space from a cookie factory. And I do mean the kind that you can bite into, not the kind that you get whenever you log into a website. So the cookie factory is just a, a perfect place to have such a great center for, for kids to feel at home in and for families to feel welcome. Next slide. On this slide, if you get rid of your the gallery here, then you can see all the buttons around. The blue circles and the leaves represent Sky Partnerships. So the blue circles are those uh, departments and hospitals and services that are offsite to us. So we have uh, government departments like Manitoba Health, Education, and Families. And then on the inner circle for the, on the sky tree, we have the sky partners that are co-located within our building. And not just because we value and celebrate diversity within our groups and within the people we serve, but also to mark those partners who are going to present to you today, we see those partners as the colored leaves upon the sky tree. So uh, with that, I will, uh, I welcome you to sit back and enjoy hearing about the creative work of, of the people who, who are around this table. Thank you. Thanks so much, Gina, for that, uh, that introduction to what is Sky. So as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Rempel was uh, one, of, uh, one of the passionate advocates uh, for the favorite words and the use of the F words in Manitoba prior to our partnership with Canchild and this implementation study. So I'll just touch on a few pre-existing strategies um, that Dr. Rempel and others really embraced and advocated for. Uh, Dr. Rosenbaum, of course, had visited Manitoba, I believe, twice, uh, once before Sky Center was built and again afterward. And as you can see from the picture, um, we did meet, it was a couple of years ago now, but it was 2019 when we could all see each other in person and stand nice and close for a, a photo. Um, so in his most recent visit, Dr. Rosenbaum, I think really sir, that provided presentations that reignited the enthusiasm around the use of the favorite words presenting to researchers at our Child Health Research Days, 
uh, another presentation to clinicians at the Sky Center, and another presentation to families at the Sky Center as well. So a, a jam-packed schedule, but um, really spreading the word across multiple groups. We also had general use and knowledge of the F words or favorite words across the center um, before and after this presentation. So uh, different departments, different programs had forms or different ways of using the F words with clients and families. And uh, I would say it was uh, not a consistent or integrated approach, but definitely awareness and readiness and enthusiasm for these concepts in our center and our partner centers and organizations. You can also see uh, an example in the upper corner there, the photo with the teddy bear, uh, ways that our creative team, and, and you'll hear from our assistive tech group in a moment, um, really looked at how you know, personalization and how you can make assistive technology a little bit more fun for families, um, adapting the color, adapting the design in some cases, and here even adapting for your teddy bear. Next slide, please. So our team, you've met Gina and I, but we are a broad team. We're interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary backgrounds with reach across our uh, co-locating as well as our non-co-locating partners. And next slide, please. And here are most of our pictures here. Um, in addition to clinicians, uh, we have a very enthusiastic team that includes a parent partner and uh, that's Liz Bannister. And we're really grateful as well to have Elder Mary Wilson providing guidance to our team. Next slide, please. So as part of this implementation research project, we were asked to look at facilitators and barriers to a more integrated use of the favorite words across our programs. And the facilitators, of course, were easy for people to talk about. Um, the favorite words were really, you know, taken up as a relevant concept relating to the ICF framework, of course, so the concepts were familiar and really were felt to align with that family-centered and strengths-based practice that people um, really identify with. It was also in that idea of the champion, I mentioned like Dr. Rempel and others, the champions, the early adopters, um, and people who use these words, these concepts in practice and in interactions with families, uh, creating forms uh, or just methods of integrating it into the conversation that um, was, I think, promoting meaningful engagement. It was noticed by other colleagues and that enthusiasm was seen to be contagious. The favorite words were also seen to provide a really great framework for interventions and education. Next slide, please. So barriers, uh, I mean, any conversation right now about barriers to practice change, I think, of course, we'll have to acknowledge the, the pandemic and the difficulties that that has provided for healthcare providers as well as our families. So talking about implementing something, even if it's not new, but in a different way, um, has to be talked about in the context of what the reality is today. Um, but aside from that too, you know, a lack of, uh, or what was seen to be a lack of readily available tools that people could bring into their practice or could use for charting um, or that procedure that, you know, you could really just easily integrate into routine in a busy day um, felt to be a barrier to the consistent use of the favorite words. It was also, you know, seen as another change of practice and always trying to um, keep up to date with the many changes in practice. Uh, any slight change in how you go about your interaction, of course, is another uh, little hurdle that needs to be overcome. There was some concern about inconsistent adoption across services or programs. So if one program was talking about it a lot with families and the family moved to another program, um, you know, that inconsistency could be seen to be disruptive to the family and their care as well. And, uh, you know, family awareness overall, as well as cultural relevance were barriers that were discussed in our group. So in terms of where that went, we mapped those, of course, as part of the project towards strategies that could be used to improve implementation and that coordination of the use of the favorite words across programs. And you can see some of the strategies that we, um, we came up with as a group here. I'm not going to touch on each of them here, but I'll just we'll leave this up for a moment. And what we'll do is pass it off now to members of the different programs to present on how each of their groups has started to adopt some of these strategies and uh, present some early impact stories that we're already seeing. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Jason to talk about their work in assistive technology. Uh, thanks, Christy. 
Uh, hi there, my name is Jason Ward. I'm a mechanical engineer at EIT in the assistive tech department here at the Rehab Center for Children. So in essence, the assistive tech department is responsible for providing equipment to help kids reach their goals. So we're typically able to reach this through one of three avenues, either uh, designing a completely custom solution, modifying a standard consumer product, or adjusting specialty equipment designed for our population. So a good example of the type of equipment that we provide is uh, the mini wheels on the left there. So it's a device that utilizes a, a commercial floor seat and is turned into a mobility aid through uh, custom 3D printed and CNC uh, components. So part of what makes our team so unique and effective is its multidisciplinary multi approach. So our team is comprised of OTs, PTs, engineering EITs, uh, ranging from biosystems, mechanical, and electrical, as well as uh, technologists and technicians. So between the lot of us, we're usually able to find creative solutions to meet every child's unique needs and goals. So one of the common threads and the barriers that we identified was lack of awareness across both service providers and families. So our strategies were aimed at addressing these barriers. So our first uh, initiative was the installation of TVs in appointment rooms to serve as a digital display or message board to educate the families on what the favorite words are, as well as how they apply to those services that we provide in assistive tech. So these TVs had infographs from the Can Child resources, as well as pictures of kids that we see uh, here demonstrating their favorite words. Um, the second strategy that we had was the development of our favorite words profile wall. So the wall is located directly in front of the elevator as you enter the department. And it serves as a home for the profile sheets that families fill out during their appointments. Uh, a secondary goal of this was to increase buy-in and participation from families. So in an effort to populate the board and as well as increase service provider awareness, I offered to uh, team members in our department as well as our neighboring department, uh, prosthetics and orthotics, to fill out profile pages about themselves and their own favorite words. So the example that you see on the side there is uh, my profile sheet. Um, the profile pages themselves were developed using a Canva template, but they're, they're based on the same existing CanChild uh, profile pages. Myself and Nicole also hosted two learning seminars, one for our department and one for our neighboring department to, again, increase that awareness and knowledge amongst the service providers in our area. And Nicole and our team of therapists uh, worked to adjust their charting templates to accommodate the favorite words framework and the discussions that they were having in appointments. Uh, into their clinical notes. And then the next uh, example, I wasn't directly involved in this appointment, but I feel like this is just gets to the core of why the favorite words are so important and why we need to continue uh, down this path. So this family came in and had their appointment with their therapist. And at the end of it, they were asked, you know, is there anything else you need? And they said, no, like we've got our standard, our walker, our wheelchair. I think we've got everything we need. And then it wasn't until using the F-Words framework and talking about their family and what they like to do for fun did we find out that they were big fishers. Uh, but what would typically happen is uh, Ben's dad and brothers would go out fishing while uh, Ben and his mom stayed back. So we said, hey, we can, we can help with this. Do you want to go fishing? And our team developed a switch adaptive fishing rod and provided it to, to Ben so that he was able to go out on the boat and fish alongside his brothers. And with that, I'll pass it off to Chris. Okay. okay, so I'm Chris Fraze, and I am presenting on behalf of the on-site occupational therapy and physiotherapy department. And so we provide preschool neurodevelopmental services um, to kids who live in Winnipeg. Um, we work really closely with families, developmental pediatricians, on-site clinics, um, other partners um, in the community and um, help with the transition of care between our site and other sites as well. Um, children often start their journey with us and I'll get to that in a second. They start their journey with us and then they move into um, community or school-based programs um, as um, they age and as their needs change. Um, so implementation, um, 
we focused on three areas. So the first one was increasing awareness. And so we did this with staff and with families. Um, for staff, we had regular staff meetings where we talked about each of the words. And so we would kind of focus on one at a time so that we could really delve into um, how we could integrate that concept into our practice and um, facilitate kind of awareness uh, among the staff. Um, and we also had a social media campaign. And the goal for the social media campaign was to raise awareness with our staff, with our clients and their families, but also to gather photos. Because what we want to do in the long run is similar to what Jason did and his group did upstairs in the um, prosthetics and orthotics and equipment area. We want to, in the waiting areas, have photos available showing the families and how they live their favorite words. And so we're soliciting these photos um, through our social media campaign to gather real world pictures. And you'll notice lots of the pictures in here are actually photos that either were submitted to the social media campaign or um, to Jason or Nicole through their equipment um, concepts. And we're also copying um, the upstairs model where we're gonna work on a um, favorite words wall so that we can share our profiles with families who are coming just to our department. Uh, our second strategy uh, was to look at education materials and forms. And so we took stuff that we had already developed for other areas. We had developed um, uh, favorite words poster based off of Canchild's um, template, but also included actual photos um, based on some of the feedback from Elder Mary and talking about culturally um, appropriate um, pictures and development. So we adapted it slightly for our parent education sessions. And then we matched our handouts to match what um, the equipment and prosthetics and orthotics folks were using upstairs so that we have through Rehab Center for Children, our um, look will always be the same. And so we developed that and are also using a transition document that we borrowed from Manitoba Possible who will present afterwards. So we are the like used from everywhere and adapt to make it work for us folks. Um, and then our third um, strategy was to um, adapt our electronic medical record to have some macros in it so that we can easily um, document families' goals based on our favorite words and document that we've discussed or at what point we've gotten to in the discussion of favorite words so that we can link that in to our communication. And the next slide, um, we're talking about an impact story. So uh, Rachel was a little girl with um, both physical and cognitive um, impairments that were affecting her participation in the community. And to be fair, she also was growing up during COVID, so it wasn't getting a whole lot of social interaction. Um, and so her family had decided to um, set her up with a daycare, but the daycare was really concerned about having her walker in the daycare. Her dad was also very concerned about what people would think about having the walker. Um, he very much did not want her to look disabled. And so we talked about the F words of how every family is different. And we talked about function and the importance of, importance of participation. And he kind of came around to being willing to try things that would let her participate and ended up loving the walker. Um, but then also the daycare was really nervous about how they were gonna integrate her. And so we built an F words profile um, for, with the family for them to give to the daycare. And what that allowed the daycare to do is kind of understand her strengths and the ways that they could support her to participate. And so um, with that, she's been able to integrate into the daycare and they actually haven't had to do a whole lot other than support her strengths. So it's been very exciting. I'm gonna pass it off to Krista now. Hi, my name is Krista Buchanan, and I work with Manitoba Possible, which was formerly known as Society for Manitobans with Disabilities. Um, we are a, a, an ex inclusive and accessible society that works together to eliminate barriers to full and equal participation across the lifespan. 
Provincial Outreach Therapy for Children is one program at Manitoba Possible. And uh, we are a preschool program. In Winnipeg, POTSI provides OTPT and SLP services in homes, nursery schools, and childcare centers. In rural Manitoba, we provide SLP services across the province in a variety of different communities that you can see listed there. Next slide, please. We've also had the good fortune of being involved in the Jordan's Principal um, program, and we provide SLP services in 44 First Nations communities in Manitoba, in addition to audiology services in 16 First Nations communities. Principle. How do we work? Um, both Outreach Therapy for Children and Jordan's Principal work in a family-centered way. We um, very much appreciate learning about families' goals for their child and work to develop a plan to work on these goals with the families. We're consultative, so we work with caregivers to empower them to work with their child through daily play and just everyday life. We're collaborative, we work with community programs and partners. And we also are very focused on transition planning. So we work with families and other community members for a smooth and seamless transition into daycares and to schools. So for our implementation, what we looked at as a barrier was that many of us were very aware of the favorite words, concepts and language. Lots of us had the posters neatly printed and put on above our um, cubicle uh, bulletin boards so that we could look at them. But there wasn't a consistent way for us to implement those into our daily practice. It was a little bit hit and miss. Sometimes we did a few of the F words and sometimes we did none of them. And sometimes we might have uh, done the whole sheet, but we wanted to find a way that we could consistently use this across our programs and make it really meaningful for families. So the first thing that we did was we altered our Welcome to Outreach Therapy handout that goes out to families prior to them starting services with us. And what we did is we wove um, all of the favorite words into the language of this document. So we talked about different things in under physiotherapy and occupational therapy. It might've been about fitness or fun or function. Family was woven through the whole document. Um, so that the families could see that language, how it related to the different therapies and our program in general. And then it also contains a link to the CanChild website so that if families are interested, they can look at the various videos and amazing uh, resources that are on the CanChild website as well. The next thing we did was we developed a favorite words profile for staff to use primarily in their discussion and interview process with families. And again, it was just reworking that language and consistency with staff so that they took a step back and they really looked at the whole child and that they looked, it helped staff then take a look at what was really important for the families and what they already knew their child could do, what they felt their child needed to work on a little bit and really helps us to support families in developing goals for their child from a holistic standpoint and looking at a participation and activity-based framework. The final document that we've uh, completed to date, and it's always evolving, is a kindergarten and daycare here I come document. And Chris alluded to that a little bit. So this document um, is written often in conjunction with families or sometimes by families. And it's to share information with the new environment that the child is moving into. The focus of this is, is to use all of our favorite words to show how what the child is able to participate in and how that child can participate in a wide variety of activities. And it shows all aspects of the child's life. So our impact story is also about a child that's transitioning into daycare. And when we stop back, stop and think back to why do the favorite words matter, it's that it lets families focus on ability and gives them the opportunity to see what their child can do. In using the here we come 
document to help a child transition from home to daycare, we heard the family say that it was really nice to think about their child in that way and to really focus on what the child was able to do and not think so much about what, the, what he could not do. So this little boy, when we filled out the document, um, we let the daycare know that he had a new pet fish that was an important part of the family and that he really loved to play with his cousin. We let the daycare know that if you build a tower, that Carter really liked to knock it down. And if he was in his walker, you better watch out because you might get run over. These all drew on those important concepts of fun, fitness, function, family, so many of our favorite words. The daycare was initially anxious about programming for the child because of his diagnosis and shared in the meeting that they had many concerns with him coming in until they had read our Here We Come document. They said that after reading it, we know what to do. We know that he is just a little boy who wants to have fun like all of the other kids. We know how to play, we know how to have fun and we can do this. Using our favorite words lets kids shine and their challenges fade to the background and that's how it should be. So we're very grateful to be using this framework. I'll now pass it over to Michelle. Thanks, Krista. Um, I'm Michelle Lark. My picture was missing from that earlier page, but I'm the research coordinator for the uh, Children's Therapy Initiative Network or CTI Network. Um, and uh, so I'll just start with a little bit of background on the CTI Network itself. Um, so it started in the early 2000s with the goal of providing coordinated regionally based services in audiology, OTPT and SLP for children from birth to school leaving. Um, and it's a partnership of health, families, and education um, government departments. And right now it's made up of 13 different regions across the province that you can see in that um, map on the left there. And uh, so because of this sort of regional structure of CTI, um, we noticed over time that each region had sort of developed its own procedures and processes and practices. And so a few years ago, um, the CTI modernization project started with uh, five concrete goals. Some, uh, some of those goals or those goals include uh, standardizing operating processes um, and developing and implement, implementing policy, uh, evidence-based practice, increasing equity and access to services and improving communication across the province. Um, between clinicians um, and, uh, and managers and, and really just everyone that belongs to the CTI network uh, to make sure that, that there's consistency there. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the CTI modernization project has a lot of working groups that are all working towards these goals. And many of the um, favorite words implementation team members sit on some of those working groups. So members from RCC and Manitoba Possible and other Sky Network members. Um, and one of, the, uh, one of the topics that came up in our discussions at the table was an existing provincial document for introducing um, a child with additional support needs to uh, school. And the existing document um, was being discussed and some may maybe some improvements that could be made to that document to focus more on some of the core principles of CTI network, like a strengths-based approach and family-centered service. And Krista um, brought up the document that her team was working on, the Here I Come document. And, and there was a lot of excitement and enthusiasm about that. And so, we realized that our favorite words um, and the implementation of our favorite words really aligns well with some of the goals of the CTI network modernization project. Of course, evidence-based practice, um, service equity, making sure that all families and clients are going through the same procedure, being, um, being uh, sorry, being talked about in a strength-based approach and making sure that when clinicians are discussing uh, kiddos across the province, uh, we're all using the same language, so really facilitating that communication aspect as well. So um, as, it, as it said in an earlier slide, I'm very new to the team. Um, so there's uh, the work that's been done so far is, is sort of minimal. We're kind of just laying the groundwork right now, um, but we have a CTI network member only 
um, website. So all clinicians across the province have access to that website. They can log in and we have a favorite word section, which at the moment um, includes uh, Dr. Rosenbaum's talk from 2019 that he, uh, that he gave at Sky Center um, and uh, a link to all of the great resources at Kent on the CanChild site. Um, the original F-Words research article for those clinicians that want more information. Um, and really just, it's sort of an endorsement of, of the F-Words and our favorite words. And so over time, we're hoping to, um, to include some of the new resources that have been developed by team members. Um, and we're going to continue on with discussing implementation uh, procedures across the province at our CTI network working group tables. I'll hand it back to Christy. Thanks, Michelle, and thanks to everyone for sharing the work that all of you are doing in your different areas. I think it's just so much more meaningful coming from each of you as you're the ones who came up with the ideas and worked so hard and continue to work so hard in implementing them. I won't say too much more other than I'm, I'm truly honored to work with our team locally in Manitoba on this project. At every meeting we meet monthly is, um, is fun and is you leave energized and we've got wonderful impact stories like these ones um, as part of our monthly agenda. And thank you all for listening uh, as part of the broader CanChild implementation team as well. We're, we're grateful for being able to participate in this group, learning from each of you and what, uh, what your different programs are doing so that we can continue to work to make things better for families uh, in our province as well. So if anyone has questions, we are more than uh, open to answering them as this is being recorded. If people have questions and watching the recording, uh, Liz and my email are listed here as well. So please reach out. Uh, you can see our team continues to grow and I don't think we would turn anyone away. So um, yeah, reach out and, and I'll pause there for questions. <laughs>